Many of you know that I'm a bit of a recovering live and let live guy. You know, one of those people that uh, was fine with just let it, let him get married. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Well, it's gone from that in a very short period of time to some sort of insane uh, mutation where it's just far, far from just let us get married, just let us, let us live our lives. It's now become this, you must affirm us, you must worship us, you must protect us from ridicule, you must not be able to criticize us, you must, you know, all this insane stuff that, quite frankly, uh, I didn't agree to and most people didn't agree to. Well, I thought I would highlight Dr. Jordan Peterson's position on the month because I, I think uh, it's very, very wise. Uh, I think that obviously people are going to be upset about it, and that's fine. I'm still pretty moderate around, hey, have your pride celebrations. That's cool. Have your pride month. That's cool. Um, I don't think it needs to be an entire month, but whatever. Uh, just, you know, keep it away from kids. I think that is a very reasonable position. Uh, that has been trampled in the past several years. Now, I don't think all members of this community are evil. I don't think all members of this community uh, want to you know, involve kids in their festivities or any of that stuff. But I do think some of them do, and their own community is not policing it. And it's been unpoliced. I want to just show this little clip first before I look into his article that he wrote. You know, we have Pride Month. Um, Oh, I can't now because it's got that stupid song on it. I can't uh, do that. But how about this one? Pride means something like stubborn refusal to change when evidence of error is accruing. And it's not a good thing. There is a real tinge of narcissism, sexual narcissism about the whole pride spectacle. It's also the case that identities based on something as narrow as sexual desire, let's say, aren't identities at all. They're pronouncements of subjection to instinctual whim. And I also have a real problem with the idea of the LGBT plus, et cetera, community, because it's not a community. And it's especially not a community right now because the trans pushing, gender affirming butchers and liars Oops. primarily target young people whose most likely outcome on the sexual front is homosexuality. I think that's a fair point. You know, I think a lot of people ask questions like, why does, you know, why, why is it always the kids? Think of the kids. Think of the kids. The kids need our help. The kids need our help. Well, maybe they don't. Maybe the kids are happy to just go through a little bit of an awkward phase in their life. Maybe the kids are totally fine, um, you know, doing things on their own. You know, maybe the kids are 100% fine. Uh, just working through it. I, I think that that's entirely reasonable. So the transgender affirming butchers and liars are differentially destroying the youthful gay community. And that's not a community by any stretch of the imagination. I would say that that's also true. I think that, you know, I still believe that, you know, people are born a certain way and that that's okay. And I'm fine with them existing and living their best life. But now you seem, we seem to have this outside kind of influence where um, you have people entering that community and uh, making it something very different, making it something that serves ph pharmaceutical companies, pharmaceutical industries, getting people on lifelong prescriptions, having people remove healthy tissue from their body, convincing them that this is going to be something that um, fixes you, that this is going to be something that makes you feel better when the science is shaky at best around it. You can look at many of the countries that these woke progressive leftists talk about, you know, Europe's got such amazing health care. Well, okay, let's say that's true. I think it's pretty, pretty curious that they have now started basically wholesale banning, uh, giving young ones these types of prescriptions or allowing this kind of stuff because kids are kids. Do some of those kids grow up to be trans? Sure. Are some of those kids going through a phase? Almost definitely. And that's proven by the, uh, the significant amount of people who are detransitioning. Like, I'm just done with it. I don't like the flag. I think it's a piece of idiocy. I don't understand why it changes every bloody week. I don't know who makes those decisions. I don't like the acronym and all the mystery surrounding it. I don't like the fact that 
the LGBT agenda, whatever that is, increasingly dominates the school system. I don't like the fact that it's targeted at young people. And I think the surgery, the gender affirming care movement, <laughs> I think it is Nazi Auschwitz level awful. I mean, he just went all the way. JBP just went all the way. And, you know, I can't say that I would disagree with it. You know, I think that we've gotten to this level of essentially medical testing on living patients. You know, people who are out there like just going through it, maybe now we have weird testing for them. You know, now they've got a, uh, you know, we've just figured it out. Let's just chop your healthy tissue off and see if that helps. Oh, it didn't help. Well, we can't reattach it. Sorry. He wrote, pride is not a virtue. Jordan Peterson says he is done with Pride Month. And I think a lot of people are. I think when you look at members of the, you know, people that celebrate Pride, okay, you have nobody to blame but yourself. You're the ones that allowed these to turn into family events that have kids there. You're the one that chose to accept maps into your community. You're the ones that pushed drag story hour for kids. You're the ones that push for this crap to be in elementary schools and middle schools. You're the ones. I mean, it's not me. I didn't tell you to do that. I told you to have your big party, have your celebration, have your beer tents, have your bands, you dress up, have a good time um, wherever you want. I don't have any problem with it. If there's a pride party in my in my community, I wouldn't have any problem with it. If you know any one of my gay friends wanted me to go with them and celebrate, I would. I don't care. Just keep the kids out of it and, and you know, maybe don't cram it down everybody's throat. People have just had enough. I'm just done with it. I don't like the flag. It's a piece of idiocy. I don't understand why it changes every week. Um, you know, in recent years, a wave of seemingly gender dysphoric kids in both the U.S. and Europe have been approved for prescriptions and surgeries to make them appear as the opposite. Some European countries and United States states have since pumped the brakes on these treatments. I wonder why. Peterson added, added that he thinks the surgery is obviously, I talked about that. Peterson also cited author G.K. Chesterton, who offered a rule of thumb that you should not destroy a fence before knowing why it was put up in the first place. In other words, people should not destroy an institution or tradition before understanding why it's in place. The pride movement has torn down a lot of fences, and maybe some of those fences needed to go, but all of them didn't need to go. And there's plenty of monsters coming out to play now. That's why we're seeing all this butchery in the medical community, abated by idiot allies and driven by greed. And those aren't the worst monsters that exist. And so if you tear down enough fences, you're going to find out what they're for. Keep pushing, keep pushing. You're going to lose everything you've gained. And I'm not celebrating that at all, Peterson said. Peterson also criticized Pride Month's name. You should be very careful in what you name things. And pride is not a virtue, Peterson said. Pride is a cardinal sin. And there's a reason for that, he continued. Pride means something like stubborn refusal to change what evidence or error is occurring, accruing, and it's not a good thing. He noted that LGBT supporters may argue that that's not really what pride they're saying. They're just trying to, quote, affirm their identities. But there's some reason that that name was chosen. There's a real tinge of narcissism about the whole spectacle. Do people have the right to express themselves the way they see fit? Sure, to some degree, if it's consensual among adults, but generally human beings with any degree of civilized comportment whatsoever, it's a pretty dang private affair. It's also the case that identities based on something as narrow as your who you desire to sleep with, let's say, are not identities at all. They are pronouncements of subjection to institutional whim. I'm sorry, instinctual whim, Peterson said. Yeah, I mean... It's he's just a hundred percent right about right about it. You know, people are saying, you know, look, enough is enough. We've had plenty. We've allowed a lot of rope, a lot of leeway, and you took it too far. You know, I love his breakdown on this. Pride Month equals you. Re you've reduced your identity to the most hedonistic part of you. The sad part. The part that would exploit someone else for your own gratification, spot on. I mean, it that's truly what it is. I mean, if you look at 
what a lot of these youths that are spending a lot of time um, talking about their identities, talking about how they identify and what pronouns they should be using and what pronouns you should use when you talk to them, all this nonsense, okay? It all comes down to people who really aren't that interesting, who are trying to make themselves interesting by inventing this nonsense that makes them, in their mind, special or interesting. Now, I don't think that, you know, when they say Pride Month, I don't think they're talking about the actual feeling or emotion of pride. But I would say that a lot of people have just had enough now. The tide is turning. And you know what? To a certain degree, that's unfortunate. You know, I've seen it. It's gone from a lot of people who were like live and let live and everything's cool and everybody's happy. You know, go have your fun to an outright hatred. And people didn't get there overnight. People got pushed there. People were asked to accept others, which I fully support. But now that's gone and it's become people have been told they must worship others. They must not just accept, but they must constantly affirm others' personal you know, political ideologies or who they sleep with or whatever. And people have had enough of that. People don't want it. It started with Bud Light, right? And, and it's, it's really just what's happening is the pendulum, pendulum is switching, swimming, swinging back the other way. Now, I don't want it to get so far to where people you know, have a genuine hate for this community. I don't want it to get that far, but it's headed there. Why? Because that community didn't police itself. They did this to themselves. They kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And now we have the pushback from regular everyday people who are just tired of it. You've, you, nobody cares that gay people exist anymore. All right. Stop acting like victims and get back to work. All right. Nobody cares anymore. You're not stunning and brave for coming out anymore. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about you. Just do your job, live your life and leave other people alone. We're sick of it. And again, it's your fault, not ours. You pushed it too far. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, and we'll talk to you again real soon.